Alrighty, hey gang, welcome back you guys, Matt here, another bro audio video, um, another stove chat video, episode 2, so I think I'm going to do these every now and then for you guys, just kind of stay in touch and, uh, you know, have a way to sort of share little bits of info that aren't necessarily um, worthy of maybe a whole video, but yeah, just wanted to kind of keep these things coming out at you guys and you guys have lots of questions for me so you know it's been so fun you guys working with you on your builds i am just having a blast seeing continental cook stoves and walker tiny cook stoves and batch heaters and all of those things come to life all over the world and and helping you guys achieve your heating goals has been just a blast seeing some of your designs um and concepts and seeing them come to life uh really rewarding so thank you very much and um that's really what this is for is to make sure that there's a good way you know to um stay abreast of your questions and and keep the information going out there so that you guys are successful in your builds yeah so anyways um here i am in the middle of february and uh we just finally got our first big snowstorm um our only snow this year really but it started snowing about 7 o'clock yesterday morning. It's just about 7 o'clock here now, and there's about two feet of new snow, it looks like, in the last 24 hours. So I'm stuck here for a while, it looks like, which is pretty cool. I'm uh, kind of looking forward to it. I'm going to go probably shred my hill, take some runs today. And, you know, the cook stove's doing awesome. Uh, my tiny cook stove, keeping my little shack here totally warm and toasty it's uh, 75 in here right now i only just started burning at um six or so about an hour ago and it's 23 outside and and windy and just hammer and snow still so i don't know how much we're gonna get when this thing's all over it's supposed to snow uh, i think throughout the day and into tomorrow um so that's something else so i got my big pot of water here you might be able to hear it it's kind of simmering away there uh, i'm trying to get the humidity up it's been super dry here I'm looking over at my little weather center there, and uh, it was 2% humidity in here. <laughs> Before I got this thing on here, it's about 10% now, so it's dry. So I'm all sort of dried out, so excuse me for that. Um, so yeah, so let's see. You know, um, working with you guys on the stoves has been great. Uh, it's been really, like I said, really wonderful to hear from you all and hear from your designs. So I wanted to talk or hear about your designs and your plans and, and see them come to life. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some things that have come up regarding the stoves. So one of the biggest questions I get, I still get it all the time, you know, people are so concerned about carbon monoxide, as you should be. Um, it's something that's very worth being concerned about, and you definitely want to be aware that it's a risk anytime you're burning any solid fuel device inside your home, whether it's a box stove you bought at, um, you know, the, the fireplace store and had professionally installed, or, or a home-built device, or anything, carbon monoxide is, you know, a silent killer, and um, and we need to be aware that it can be very dangerous. Now that said, I get a lot of comments on particularly the bell videos. Um, you know, my benches are hollow bells, as we call them, large chambers used to stratify the gases to extract heat. Um, and warm our thermal mass and be the thermal battery. Now that makes a lot of people really nervous. Um, people naturally think that by having flue pipe in the benches like they've seen in traditional rocket mass heaters, they're somehow safer or more sealed. Um, you know, I don't believe that's the case. I think that's a myth. Uh, those The flue pipes are buried in cob and, and they are just as likely to leak as, as anything here. But that's really not the point of this, um, of this, little bit here really what I want to say is that there's always a risk now I believe that the bells are actually uh, one of the safest ways to build thermal mass and I don't feel that they I feel that they actually minimize the risk of leaks and danger because they tend to run so well um, and I've talked about this before you know when the whole stove is warm in other words any time that that stove is burning or any time that there's any risk for carbon monoxide production the stove is creating its own draft, so it is um, driving that, driving those carbon monoxide and other exhaust gases um, up and out the chimney. Now that's just due to the nature of the thermal mass and a thermal battery thermal mass heater. 
Um, so I feel they're very safe in terms of carbon monoxide as opposed to a metal box stove, which you can smolder very cool uh, and actually have no draft and be creating lots of carbon monoxide, so much more dangerous situation. Now all that said, there's always a risk. And so anytime you're burning a um, solid fuel device inside, you should always have, I suggest, always having a carbon monoxide monitor nearby. Now carbon monoxide is heavier than air, it's clear, it's odorless, and it's poisonous. So it tends to settle low in your home, down in the, on the floor, and build up from there. Um, so you want to put that carbon monoxide measuring device somewhere low. So, um, you know, I live with my little small dog here, and of course he sleeps right in front of the stove, about eight inches off the floor in his little basket, so he's really at risk. So I put my carbon monoxide monitor right over his bed at about the same elevation of his head, and, you know, using that, I feel protected from any potential carbon monoxide leaks. Now, that said, I've been burning this stove in here for three years. That carbon monoxide monitor has never once gone off. So, there's no significant risk of carbon monoxide leaks uh, due to the nature of these systems because the way they're built, the bell systems are not inherently risky. You've got a four inch seal of clay sand mortar between each and every brick uh, that that would have to be compromised before they would leak. The tops are sealed with that same mortar. It's sealed all the way around so there's no inherent risk as at the same time they also create excellent draws. So they're always drawing out. If they weren't drawing out you would see smoke coming out the firebox door. That's the largest leak there is in the whole system so if the system wasn't pulling in air all the way through itself to exhaust out the chimney it would be smoking out of any leaks and the biggest leak is the firebox door so in other words there's not a risk to be worried about with carbon monoxide danger poisoning with these systems however you really do want to use a carbon monoxide monitor anytime you have a solid fuel burning device inside so there's that little safety tip I just wanted to really stress that point um, <clears throat> so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, something specific to these builds and that is that you know these builds are what I'll call composite builds they usually feature a core and an outer skin you know I'm gonna move this because it's really simmering and making a lot of noise Stove is really hot right now <laughs> so uh, so the, the stoves, you know, whether it's the tiny stove or the brick rocket mass heater or my batch uh, box rocket mass heater plans, all of my stove design plans feature what I'll call composite construction. They feature an internal core and an external skin for the stove body. Now, in most of my stoves, those cores are ceramic fiberboard. Uh, there's my full stove, which uses insulated fire brick. Um, but in all those cores, we have an inner core and an outer skin. Now, what I wanted to stress when you're building any of these stoves <clears throat> is that in the construction process, we really want to join those to become monolithic. And the reason for that is we don't want any leakage or shortcutting of the exhaust gases. We don't want them to be able to bypass the core and go around the outside of the core and find their way to the exhaust, uh, any other... Um, pathway with the exception of what we've designed uh, for the gases through the core. So some folks will put the ceramic fiber cores inside their stove body and just sort of loose fit it in there. What I want to stress is that as you build up your layers around the core, you want to put that core in when you're just at the first containing layer that will hold it. And you want to start packing around it as you go with your clay sand mortar. By doing that, you're going to join those outer bricks, that outer skin, with the inner core, and you'll seal it up. And what that'll do is a couple things. Most importantly, it'll um, eliminate shortcutting going out around the core. Uh, more importantly, or probably that's the most importantly, but equally importantly, is it'll um, 
isolate the core parts from moving so the ceramic fiberboard sides will be locked in place and that'll really help the whole thing stay stable and sturdy and strong and to burn much more efficiently and it will also if you seal up the whole outside you'll also eliminate any chance of leaks through the gaps um, as the ceramic fiberboard or the bricks shrink and settle a little bit if you're sealed up all the way around the outside our inner seals don't matter so much so when you're building those just make sure you join that core with the stove body and make that one entire monolithic structure um, so that we don't get shortcutting or you know uh, any sort of gaps or, or um, you know seals that are not sealed so that's that one and then last but not least I want to talk about ex heat extraction with regards to our bell systems or the stoves in general so one of the most common questions I get is people you know really brainstorming dreaming and thinking about the ideas and concepts um, as they're going to build their stove and they get people get real excited about the idea of bell systems and people get real excited about the idea of of maximum heat extraction and I just want to stress that that what we're trying to do here is extract the maximum amount of heat into our space while still maintaining enough heat in the chimney to create adequate draft to drive combustion you know these stoves really need a good draft um, fast airflow through the firebox if they're gonna burn at that 90 percent efficiency that they're capable of so it's really important that we keep draft high so a lot of the questions that I get people will say oh I want to build one of your stoves I'd like to add um, double bells I I have read that that's going to give me maximum heat extraction I really want this thing to be efficient and so what I want to stress is that heat extraction does not equal efficiency heat extraction is simply um, how much heat you're pulling out of the flue gases and you can certainly pull too much so we're not really going for the maximum extraction in a certain size now if you're trying to build the smallest size stove you possibly can then you may want to try and maximize your extraction your surface area your radiating surface area and your absorbing surface area within the stove in that small space to try and put the most um, heat extraction in a small space but of course then you don't have much mass so you don't have much thermal battery because you're trying to minimize your volume so these are things that I get questions on a lot people get their heads wrapped up in the idea that extraction equals efficiency and what I want to stress is that that's not the case that really what we're trying to do is is look at our space that we're in um, identify our goals like how big of a bench do we want how large of a footprint do we want our heater to take up how much room can we give it do we want people to be able to lie down um, you know all of those things come into play and to be honest with you most of us want larger benches more heated seating we want it's nice to have a lot of surface area that radiates heat it tends to keep the space um, very warm but it's really easy to create too much mass or too much extraction by building your bench too large and so the reason I'm bringing this up is is just to say we're not always trying to maximize extraction we don't need our bells to be the most efficient extractors of heat you know if I would want to build a big bench because it fits the space and it fits my goals for people seating people and how I want to use that space then I don't want maximum heat extraction I want that heat extraction to be matched correctly to the bench size so that the whole bench heats up and it doesn't extract too much heat from the stove and the stove runs stable and consistently regardless of, of conditions so I just wanted to touch on that you know the the idea it's it's easy for us to get stuck on efficiency and think that we're maximum extraction maximum efficiency is what we're going for now we are going for maximum efficiency but a stove won't be efficient if it's not running smooth and stable in all conditions and by that I mean a stove that has too much extraction when it's cold is very difficult to run and, and if it's difficult to run that means it doesn't have enough draft if it doesn't have enough draft that means it's not com um, it's not burning the way it's designed to and so it's not achieving complete combustion so your efficiency goes in the toilet 
because you tried to maximize efficiency on the extraction side, you're now burning far less efficiently. So in other words, don't agonize too much about that. And there's a magic bullet to sort of overcome all of this. And that's the bypass. And all of my stoves feature either a passive or a active bypass that you can use to manage your draft, to manage your chimney temperatures, and to make sure that we always have adequate combustion, kind of regardless of bench or bell size. So um, once you build your stove, you'll understand what I mean. It's really a function of tuning to meet your goals, how you run that stove, how you use that bypass. Um, but suffice it to say that we're not trying to maximize extraction at every step of the way. We're trying to maximize efficiency, and that requires maintaining the stove's performance throughout its burn. Um, and using that to then charge our thermal mass, regardless of its size, shape, or physical makeup um, with regards to how much heat it extracts. So there's that. Um, I really wanted to touch on that because that's a real common question I get. So hope that made some sense to you guys. I know it's a little bit um, confounding uh, in terms of, you know, you can go a lot of different directions. And I didn't, I don't necessarily um, <clears throat> calculate it all beforehand. I'm really a big fan of tuning to meet your goals because everyone's situation is different. So I don't think that any one design, you know, when it's 23 degrees out and snowing here, it's not the same design that's going to work well when it's 50 degrees and, uh, and humid. And so that's why I do build my stoves um, sort of with a broad leeway with regards to design parameters and, and always incorporating some features like a bypass that allow you to adapt the stove to those varying conditions and always have good draft and hopefully always burn efficiently. So, hope that made some sense. Um, you guys might notice I got my new Walker Stove shirt on, so those are available now, so if any of you guys would like to um, get those, I just finally uh, have been made those available on my site, so go check that out. There's a link below in the uh, description and I think that's enough for now I'm gonna go out there and go play in the snow so I hope you guys are having a wonderful winter staying warm burning clean <laughs> making no smoke in your neighborhood and uh, I really I just can't thank you guys enough for your support it's been so great to see these my designs coming to life all over the world in your hands with your vision um, it's just been very very rewarding so I'm loving hearing from all you guys by all means, please email me. Uh, let me know how I can help you build your dream stove. And uh, let's just keep moving this thing forward. I mean, I, I am so enthusiastic. I'm so optimistic about the future of clean burning. I think we're finally getting over the hump that people realize we can do better. So, yeah, that's enough for now. Um, as always, you guys, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for listening and watching. And I'll see you next time. All right, thanks. See ya.